Hello, world. Welcome to another video update from my backyard. This is a new space, I think. I, I don't think I have too many videos from this space, so I thought I would do something different today. I'm always trying to think of different things to do, um, especially since I homeschool my son, who's not awake yet. We'll be doing that soon. So this is the early morning. This is my favorite time of day, I have to say. Um, a lot of the flowers that only bloom in the morning are open, and a lot of the ones that only bloom at night and then close in the morning, they're still open, like the four o'clocks. And um, I will take you around and show you a couple of different things that I don't normally show you. Plus, I'm getting ready to process some of the seeds that I have and I want to highlight these plants that I'm growing because the seeds will be available in my eBay store and on my website as well if you want to buy them. So I will have information on how to grow the different seeds that I sell from A to Z and um, uh, you know because I've grown all these so and in this soil in zone 7A and then I'll also share my soil amendments, um, the different uh, natural things that I add to the soil. I try to keep it as natural and organic as possible. I always shoot for, um, for that if I can afford it. Now I know organic, going all organic is expensive. It's, it is more expensive, um, but it's worth it because uh, those chemicals are just not good for you. They're just not good for you. So I'm out here in my beautiful space in the morning. The sun is uh, just starting to fill in the backyard and dry up all the dew on the grass. And it's just beautiful. The sounds, you can hear it. Um, I've created this garden with the intention of creating a sensory experience because I have kids and I, I do teach them at home. Even though two of them go to public school, I still consider them home taught. They just prefer to have the public school experience and that's perfectly fine with me. I honor that. I get to still give them the wisdom that I would give them if they were homeschooled. Um, I still get to do that when they're when I'm with them when, when we're all at home together. So I created these spaces in the yard to invite them to try to be inviting because uh, all my kids are homebodies, they're house bodies. They prefer to be in the house. They don't like the bugs, they don't like the heat, they don't like the noise. So I always am trying to do things to encourage them to come outside. So I'll show you different things that I have set up out here. And I have different activities that I do with Dominic to get him outside and to get him comfortable out here because it is a different environment out here. It, it, you only have to spend, you know, about an hour immersed in nature to really, maybe not even that. I mean, you might even feel it instantly. You feel the harmonizing and balancing effects. And it, it's really everything. It's a combination of the sounds. It's getting away from the bombardment of all the different technological frequencies that are going through our body on a non-stop basis especially when you're in the house when you're in your four walls you've got your wi-fi signals they're bouncing all over those walls bouncing through your body so it's really good to get outside to rebalance to recharge and i mean i would recommend every day um i'm outside every day i feel the difference i feel it you definitely um like uh they you, my kids when they come home from school they feel hurried up, like um, fast moving. And, you know, I'm spending all day outside in the garden usually, or, you know, doing my other work that I do from the garden. And so I'm out here and it's a different kind of time space. Things are slower, they don't move as fast. And it's, it's a lot easier to de-stress because of that. Um, so, uh, that's really what I wanted to mention from here. Now, I'm going to take you on a little tour. So you have to bear with me. I'm a one-man show right now, so I have to get up and go get the camera and my coffee. So let me go get that.
All right, so now I'll just take you around. So we'll look over here. I have this swing set up. My husband put that up there for the kids on that branch. And then next to it, we have a rope to climb. It's a 15 foot rope. And that's one of our challenges for the backyard. It's the Chico backyard challenge is to get to the top of that rope. And today our project is uh, for Dominic. He's going to get to the top of that rope because we bought a bell. So when someone makes it to the top, they're going to ring a bell. And then I'm going to get a little plaque and I'm going to put it right there on the tree somewhere that um, will be each kid's name or adult or adult. If you think you can get up there, I can get up there halfway. I've been trying. Um, it is hard. It is very hard. Um, so when the kids make it up there, I'm going to put their name on a little plaque or make a little chalkboard or something just to make it fun. Just, you know, I'm trying to get them out here. So then moving over to here, now I've got two teenage, teenage girls and, um, when they come over with their friends, we have the hammock set up over here. Of course I use it. Um, and I've created this little privacy screen, uh, vine here with the morning glory. Now let's see if there's any open today, this morning. I, there's some on the... The other morning glory there's one right there they're so beautiful there's one there so when you're sitting here you you're obstructed from view from that way and you've got shade from this from the sun so it's a very nice relaxing spot to sit to be inspired to rebalance relax recharge over here i started my peas because peas like the cold weather so we have peas in the spring and in the fall. And here's our fall peas. And these are so good, so sweet, juicy. When they're ripe, they are absolutely delicious. So these are all peas that I actually grew in the spring. I saved their seeds until just recently. And then I soaked them overnight, I sprouted them. And then I put them in the ground and here they are. This is about three weeks of growth. So over here, I wanted to highlight this beautiful caster because I have these seeds being sorted and prepared. Um, now these are, these are a little bit of a challenge to do because the seeds are toxic. So I have to, I can't let my kids mess around with these. I have to wear gloves and, and prepare a, a, you know, a surface and sanitize and all that kind of stuff. So uh, we're working on the seeds for that, but this is a caster. Uh, it's called the Giant Caster, <clears throat> excuse me. And these seeds will be available in my store on my website at www.nicolechico.com or on my eBay uh, store site, which I will have a link. And I have an Etsy store too, so I'll probably have them there as well. Um, and then we also sell them at our different farmer's market events that we do. We have one coming up on October 1st. If you're in the area, it's at Tractor Supply. It's a community event that uh, is just, I guess, for people who make their own things to sell. And these seeds, I will have them at that event. So this is the giant caster and it's been growing like this all summer. I started these seeds in February and I bought them online um, from a website who did inform me that they are toxic, so you have to be careful. Uh, but the plant itself is absolutely gorgeous. And if you want your yard to have that tropical feel like that, I mean, you can see what it adds there. And then I have another one here. Now this is another variety, so I bought a variety pack. And this is a different variety. And I will have all of these seeds available and all information on how to grow them. And then over here is the third variety. And I even have them growing in a container that I can move around for privacy, for dramatic effect. You know, instead of going out and buying something fake, you can have something real that is not that difficult to grow. And here's the other one. Now this is my favorite. This is the New Zealand caster and it's in here. It's over here in the shade. So for the, the most part of the day, well, not most, well, yeah, I guess most of the day it does get shade. The one over here, that does get more sun. So you can see how that's growing much taller and bigger. They all should get about the same size, which is like that one, if they had all of the right growing conditions. 
That one doesn't get as much sun. And then I have one over there in the corner that also doesn't get as much sun. They're not as big. But this one is still thriving even though it doesn't get as much sun. And the color of it, it's a deep purple and it's beautiful. And at the top, you can see, I don't know if you can see, the seeds are beginning to form, which is the flower or the fruit of it. And uh, they press that and turn that into castor oil, which is very beneficial for your skin. I put it in my skincare products. Another very cool thing I wanted to show you over here was all of the, uh, the passion fruits that are beginning to grow and they should be ripe soon. I did cut one open the other day just to check it and it wasn't ripe yet. Now, of course I don't see Oh, well, yeah, there's some. There's a lot around front. So I wanted to take you to show you how this is growing in as well. Um, before we get over there, I'll show you the zinnias. I love them. They're so easy to grow. And marigolds as well. And they're medicinal. I make tea out of that. They're medicinal and magical. If you're into that. So over here... We're going to, now you can see the sun is not reaching all of the yard yet. It's still early. Over here, look at how this has grown in. I just love it. Look at that. I have my little sitting area here. And it definitely gets shade. You can even sit there in the rain and you don't get rained on. And all around, let's see, where did I see? There's fruit there, and there's a big fruit there. And I thought I saw some under here, like there's one over there. And there's my little artwork stuff. My jewelry, it's like garden jewelry. I think I'll be selling this stuff as well at the next farmer's market if I have a chance to, to get stuff made. So I sit out here and I am completely inspired and I create all these different art things. Now that one is not where it should be, but there's one of them. And there's the bell that we're gonna install at the top of the tree. And uh, what else did I wanna show you? This is something that only opens in the morning and it looks like as time goes on, these get to be a more beautiful, deeper color blue. And they're only open in the morning. So these will be closing very soon. So I always try to come out here and enjoy them while they're open because they're just so beautiful. Over here, since I've been doing updates on this Tabasco, you can see we got a lot that are ripe in there and I'm just letting them sit there until more ripe and then I'm going to pick them and, and do my thing with them. So this, that's just a, an update. Oh wait, 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 wait. I got to show you these. Yes. Yes, I want to show you this. So the okra. We will also be having these seeds but later in the season. Now this okra has grown to such a beautiful size. Way bigger than the okra I had last year. So I'm allowing them to mature here so that I can collect these seeds um, for both my dried flower arrangements and um, for next year's harvest and to sell on my store if you're interested. Another plant that I wanted to highlight, which I have been in the previous videos, is the black eyed peas because we'll be having these as well. Now they're not actually peas, they are in the legume family, they're beans. They're also nitrogen fixers to the soil so they are beneficial to have growing even if it's now you can see here it's we're we're in September and mid-September actually almost to the end of September so we still have some stuff growing here I'm still collecting the beans when they're um, dried we still can eat them because they're still growing you can see there's new ones there so this is a really good uh, bean to have in your garden I highly recommend it uh, it's, it's a very good producer and you can grow it vertically and it's um, a, in that safe space if you don't have a lot of space. And I've also grown it in pots as well. So that is all I have for today. 
I hope this video inspires you to create your own spaces. Oh, another space we have is this wonderful basketball court we just took down. Now, I was going to end the video. You can see I'm just so excited about everything we've got going on here. So now the kids are all done with the trampoline. If you know anybody that wants a trampoline, we I would rather donate it and have someone just take it and then put it up in their backyard and use it. Um, but Frank is going to haul it out to the trash, but someone will probably drive by and take it. So we're reclaiming the space. I cleaned it up. This was my prep area for all my pots and stuff and it was a disaster. So I just cleaned this up so that the kids can play basketball here again. And now we have to get that light repaired so that we can see at night because we just had a little barbecue with the neighbors. Well, not really barbecue. It was kind of like a, a happy hour. And um, the kids all were playing together, but there's no light out there. So we will be working on that project next. And until the next video, I hope you all have a wonderful day. Take care.